Perfect. Live. You'll see when you see yourself up here. <laughs> okay. Uh, not good, spot. good afternoon, everybody. Um, today is January 10th. Is that right? 2023. Yes. <laughs> and this is the Senate DevOps Committee. Um, I'm very excited. It's our first meeting. I'm Senator Ruth Hardy. And um, we're going to just, since it's our first meeting, go around and introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about um, our background, you know, why we're excited or maybe not to be on the DevOps <laughs> Committee. Um, and uh, and just talk, and then we'll talk about sort of <clears throat> committee protocols and then priorities. Um, so just introductions first. You don't have to go into all of your committee priorities at this point. Um, but I just want to tell all of you how excited I am to be here, um, because you can tell by multiple emails to all of you. <laughs> um, and I just think we have the best committee in the Senate, and I think a lot of other people think that too. So um, I'm very, very thrilled to be here with all of you. Um, and why don't we start with Allison, Senator Clarkson. I was thinking, my, you're the perfect person to start. Well, I'm going to go last. I'm I'm gonna gonna to go to go save the best you. for last. And so the icebreaker that I emailed all of you was to talk about an emoji that you found particularly useful or meaningful um, or um, pet name that you like. So it doesn't have to be favorites. I hate favorites because it's hard to pick a favorite. So just something that you wanted to talk about. Well, so go ahead, Senator Clarkson. I'm Allison Clarkson. I'm one of the three senators from the Windsor District. I have the pleasure of serving Windsor with Becca and with Dick McCormick. And I served for 12 years in the House and I was first elected in 2004. Our class size is dwindling <clears throat> fast. Although one of our class members is now the Secretary of State, which is quite exciting. Um, I served for 12 years in the House representing Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading. I live in Woodstock, uh, and I have served, this is now my seventh year in the Senate. And uh, I live in Woodstock. I'm married to uh, Oliver Goodenough, who is a professor at the law school, in addition to many other things he does. He also works at, at Dartmouth at Stanford. Uh, and <clears throat> he is the reason we're in Vermont. Uh, so for 31 years, we have lived in Vermont. I was a theater producer in New York uh, for many years. And uh, it, it, to say coming to Vermont full time was a bit of a challenge is an understatement. I left my entire world and, and have had to really um, do what we're all charged to do, which is we're charged to bloom where we're planted. And so I have tried to bloom where I was planted. And boy, I would not have had the same opportunity to serve the people of a state in New York City if I had stayed in New York. So I am thrilled to uh, to be here in Vermont and have really loved uh, serving both the people of Vermont and uh, people of Windsor County District and the people of Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading. Um, I, I think that maybe I'm the majority leader in the Senate. And we have two sons, one of whom you'll probably meet uh, soon because he's the state's attorney in Windsor County, Board of Good Enough, and our son William is in New York. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and one of the caucuses I failed to mention in the Senate Democratic <laughs> Caucus today is there is a Buffalo caucus. Uh, Jill Krowinski, and I mean, and Molly Burke and Diane Lanfear, they're a surprising number of people born and raised in Buffalo. So anyway, that is me. I've, I have served on Senate government operations for six years and uh, have learned an enormous amount from our wonderful chair, uh, Jeanette White, and uh, she really instilled in me a great interest. I was not thrilled to be on this committee initially, and boy, have I loved uh, the work of this committee. So uh, whether it is... Um, of licensing, uh, whether it is law enforcement, whether it is open meeting law, whether it is uh, whatever it is that we're working on, uh, election law in particular, I, I've really found stimulating and um, I, I look forward to this journey together. So oh, my favorite emoji. I, I don't really have a favorite emoji. They're way too small for me to actually see them, even with my glasses on. 
So I actually think they're a little challenge for those of us who have older eyes. But my the emoji I use almost every day, many, many times, is the little face with a kiss. Yes. Is that, is that fair? Yes. Well, I, was, I was wondering if that was not the Allison emoji. That's yeah. my emoji. And Ciao. <laughs> it's sexual harassment through an emoji, I guess. <laughs> No, not, not it's a really appropriate love kiss. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> generally sent with affection. So, Thanks. Mistress Watson. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, um, Ann Watson. I um, am from Washington County, uh, and which the district includes uh, Stowe Orange and Braintree, in, in addition to the Washington County. Um, I am one of the new senators uh, we've just recently elected, and I just stepped down as the mayor of Montpelier uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So I've been the mayor for going on five years or so, and oh my gosh, was the mayor through COVID and through a lot of police reform and through just a, a lot of like heavy stuff. Um, and it was intense, it was, it was good. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but I've been in local government for 10 years prior to today, right? So ju just about five as mayor and five on the, um, as a city councilor prior to that. And my day job is that I teach high school <laughs> physics and engineering and math at Montpelier High School and uh, love that. It's delightful um, doing that for the last 18 years. Mm -hmm. I am originally from Vermont. I uh, grew up in Essex, um, and so just got a, you know, like a little piece of my heart still, still up there too. Um, and yeah, just recently got married, had a little baby, and um, so we're navigating the whole like childcare <laughs> scene right now. It is, it is tough. Um, yeah, but I, I'm psyched, psyched to be here. I'm psyched to be on this committee, and i uh, yeah, I mean, especially because so much of what I have been dealing with as mayor, uh, it, it actually it interfaces a lot with um, the issues that uh, this uh, committee is going to deal with. Uh, and plus, I, I just think government is fascinating. I think uh, well-run government is uh, it's a blessing. It can, it can make people's lives really hard. It can make people's lives better. Um, and so I, I'm anyway, excited to, to dive into the work. Um, it's great. And my favorite emoji, actually, it's kind of not actually my favorite emoji because it usually means that something's not great, but an emoji that I use frequently is the face palm emoji. <laughs> I, just, I find it very useful. <laughs> Sorry, the face palm. Face, face palm? Like, like that one? See, I can't, they're so tiny, I can't see that one. So you'll have to show that one. Okay, I'll show that to you. Well, show me how to blow them up so I can see. Yeah, there you go. So uh, I, it's just, it's shorter than typing face palm. <laughs> Which is something that I find myself wanting to say often. So. <laughs> it's like O M G. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very useful. Excellent. Uh, Pat Center Norris. I'm up. Bob Norris, who also don't know me. Uh, I represent Franklin One, I believe. This is my 23rd year in elected office. I spent my last two years in. The House of Representatives. I was on the House Judiciary Committee uh, when I was fortunate enough to get elected to the Senate. <clears throat> I was appointed to Senate Judiciary Committee along with the uh, Senate Government Ops. I'd like to think that the experience, let me back up just a little bit. Uh, most of my experiences in law enforcement, good, bad, or different. Uh, most of that was 10 years municipal, and I spent uh, 20 years as a deputy with the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. More recently, uh, my past 20 years, I, I retired from the Franklin County Sheriff's Office where I was sheriff. So I guess most of my <clears throat> expertise may be in uh, county government or the lack thereof here in Vermont. Yeah. My <laughs> but I, hopefully I can, I can bring something to the table uh, in reference to county government. Uh, I'm married for 45 plus years to my high school sweetheart. We have uh, four children. They have blessed us with 10. <clears throat> beautiful grandchildren. Uh, I've lived in Franklin County, Vermont, all of my life. I'm not from Buffalo. <laughs> not, not that there's any problems with that. No problems. <laughs> but uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, working with you all here and seeing what we can do in the best of Vermont as a whole. So uh, thanks for having me aboard. My favorite emoji is I don't have one. <laughs> so 
Uh, Senator Hardy said I can start with a pet name. I have no pets. <laughs> uh, I guess if I had to <clears throat> discuss an emoji, which I don't know, I can't identify one from the other, but there's one on there where there's constantly this surprise look. Yes. That's the one that I use most. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right or wrong, I hope I'm right. You are correct. Thank right. you. So, anyways, that's the story of my life. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Senator White. Hi, I'm Becca White, and I'm going to start with my favorite emoji. Um, I have the distinct honor of also being the person who introduced the emoji on license plates, Bill. Uh, <laughs> that was coincidental. Right? We, uh, <laughs> so they are close to my heart, and I like the stars in your eyes emoji, which I do send. I definitely sent it to you. It's like a oh, like so I like that one. But the cowboy hat smiley emoji is a close second. Mm. Uh, I grew up in the village of Wilder, Vermont, which is in the town of Hartford. I now live in another village in Hartford, which is Wilder Junction. I went to the University of Vermont, and right as I was coming home from college, I ran for local government. I ran for my select board when I was 20, uh, and at that point, I was elected and served for four years, including a vice chairship on the board, uh, and uh, also served on the executive board in the Vermont League of States and Towns. So that was a really good experience on um, the local government. Uh, I then ran for state representative and did that for the last four years. And I'm happily married to Dylan, my husband, who also grew up in the village of Wilder and now lives in the village of White River Junction. <laughs> and uh, we have a small home uh, through the affordable housing program. So that's really important to me. And um, climate change is my big issue. I used to work for the solar company Suncommon in Efficiency Vermont. And now I cashier at the Upper Valley Food Co-op. Uh, Tanya Lipovsky, I um, am representing Chittenden Central, which is Burlington, Winooski, Essex, and a little sliver of Colchester. Um, I live in Essex. I graduated from Essex High School. Um, it is really kind of cool to get to represent the town that I went to school in. Um, I served the last two years as a state representative on the House Government Operations Committee, so I bring my my experience from the House Government Operations Committee with me. I, like Senator Clarkson, was not terribly happy to be placed there, but ended up loving the work so much that this <laughs> was my first choice committee in the Senate. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, I started my college career actually as a theater major, um, but I graduated with a double major in psychology and biology somewhere <laughs> along the way. I, I made a yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, And I, I got my undergraduate degree at Northeastern University in Boston and my master's in social work at the University of Vermont. I work as a clinical social worker, mostly with adolescents and transition age young adults. Um, Although for the past four years, I did also work in a K-8 school as their school social worker. However, I did not go back this year. It became too much to balance that work and this work. So I maintain my clinical practice um, around the hours of the legislature. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I live in Essex <clears throat> with um, my partner and our Samoyed Laika. She is... Is that a dog? Yes. <laughs> The love she I, I adore her. Yeah. She she is a certified therapy dog, so I actually do animal assisted work in my in my practice. And she used to go to school with me. She thinks it's absolute garbage that she doesn't get to come to the state house with me, and she makes sure that I know that every morning. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to be here and to continue the work that we we started and that I started in the house. Um, and my favorite, well, maybe not my favorite emoji, but the one that I find myself using a lot these days is the shrug emoji, because I just find that there's so much learning to be done in these first few weeks. And, and as the vice chair of this committee, I anticipate a lot of learning for me as well. Thank you. Vyhovsky. It's Vyhovsky. Yes. Okay. Vyhovsky. It's not the Orsky. Yes. As, as oh, Secretary oh, Bloom. Oh, oh, Vyhovsky. Okay. Oh, All right. If anyone needs, I can give you a phonetic you spell. Correct him. I, I have twice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not his greatest strength. <laughs> um, Olivia, you want to go next? Uh, yeah, sure. Right. You can pull your chair up to your back. Hi. 
Uh, my name is Olivia Parker. Um, I'm the committee assistant for this committee. It is my first time being here um, at the legislature, um, and I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Um, I went to high school uh, in Burlington, um, but before that, I lived in Austin, Texas, um, and we moved up there um, right before I went to high school. I went to college at Skidmore College um, in upstate New York and uh, Saratoga Springs, um, studied international affairs um, and dance. And then um, after that, I was I graduated in um, spring of 2021, still with the pandemic. And so I took a little bit of a break, kind of, um, and I spent the last year and a half fish um, in New Jersey, um, where my boyfriend and his family lives working in a coffee shop. Um, and after spending a while doing that, I loved it, but I wanted to, um, you know, try something else and kind of pursue my career goals and was been interested in government. And um, this was a great way to do that and come back to Vermont. So I'm really excited to hear. Yes. Oh, yes, my favorite emoji. Um, I like the one, there's one that's just eyes. Yes, the face. Oh just God, eyes. it's just <laughs> eyes. And it doesn't have a mouth, and I think that's hilarious. No, looking to the left or the right one? No, it's like literally just like, All it's eyes? like I don't, it's kind of useless, but I think it's really funny. <laughs> I'll text yeah. all of these to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm stumped her. I thought, hey, no, no, I can't. Sarah Clarkson does one. use emojis. She definitely does. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, she does. I know how to use them. I just can't see them. <laughs> okay, mistress. Okay. So I'm, I'm Ruth Hardy. Um, I uh, represent the Addison District, um, which is all of Addison County, plus Huntington and Buell score from Chittenden County plus Rochester from Windsor County. I'm very excited to have Rochester now. They moved into our district last year. We're gonna to try to make them be in Addison County now. Hopefully no, they're not. <laughs> We're quite <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, um, uh, this is, I'm starting my third session in the Senate. Um, I've served already on four committees. This is my fifth um, new committee. I served on ag and education my first year and finance and health and welfare my second year and now GovOps and health and welfare. Um, I live in East Middlebury, um, which is south of Middlebury, strangely. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I have, uh, my, my husband teaches at Middlebury College. He's a professor of film and media. So if you want any TV show recommendations, he's your guy. <laughs> um, and uh, I have three children, two in college. Yes, I have no money because of that. <laughs> and um, a high schooler. Um, I uh, I grew up in upstate New York, not in Buffalo, mm -hmm. but near outside of Ithaca in a very small town um, that I compared <clears throat> to Virgins when people ask me, similar to Virgins. Um, and uh, I went to college in Ohio and I went to graduate school in Austin, Texas, where I got these <laughs> cowboy Fabulous boots. Um, <laughs> So, uh, uh, and my very first job out of um, uh, graduate school was working for the Wisconsin legislature. Um, so I worked for their JFO at, and I was a school finance analyst. Um, so I love school finance kind of in this really weird nerdy way. Um, and um, I'm excited to be on the GovOps committee because I think government, um, has a huge role to play in our society and we want it to work well and that it works for everybody. And I think that that's one of our main jobs as the GovOps committee is to make sure that government is here for people and that it works well for people. And if it doesn't, that we do something to change it so that it works better for Vermonters. Um, so I think accountability and oversight is a large part of our job and something that I, I look forward to digging into. Um, my favorite emoji or the one I use a lot is the dancing woman emoji. Yes. Um, and I love that you can customize it 
for hairstyle and skin tone. Um, and uh, so, you know, you can get it. So, you know, each of us could have a, yes. our, our colors on it. And there is the dancing guide too. So we can, we can well, have almost you. did that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's kind of like a power mom <clears throat> emoji because yeah. I text it to my daughters a lot when I'm like, you can do it, dancing woman. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that's my favorite. Uh, and pet names, since I did ask about it, um, uh, my husband has this rule that pets shouldn't be named people names because it's a little awkward to have a, a dog named <laughs> Allison or, or Tanya, although sometimes there are dogs. Those, so all of our dogs are named after food. Um, so we have, we've had strudel and now we have pesto. So. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, well, cool. I have the emoji list. So, we'll funny. See. so mm -hmm. my uncle, that was all their dogs were named after dictators. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our dog, our animal names were because I couldn't say Tito. And I said <laughs> Gigo, and so our first dachshund was Gigo as a result. And so our cat was Figo, feline Gigo. And so interesting. So that drew me to food. Ours, I don't have a cat name. We're, dictators. we're Mr. We've had Mr. Kitty. Mrs. Kitty, and now we have Miss Kitty. So that's creative. That is very creative. Yeah. My mom's cat, as I told you, is Miss Kitty. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we'll figure out something to do with pet names as well. But um, and I want to see emojis like big up on the screen so I can yeah. choose a better emoji. Now everybody out in the who's watching knows all of our favorite emojis. So we'll see how many texts we get with them. Um, uh, um, Okay, so we have a 35 minutes at 2.30, right? Yes. Okay, 2.30, the two attorneys are going to come. We'll ask them about their emojis, too. Um, but then they're going to talk to us about their uh, who they are and what, what they usually do work in. So we're going to spend the next maybe 10, 15 minutes talking about 10 minutes talking about committee protocol and then committee, um, uh, everybody's sort of priorities so we can start trying to map out. Um, uh, so first of all, we need to choose a clerk. And I have asked Senator Norris if he would be willing to serve as clerk. And I just want to confirm on the record that you're you're willing to do it. Oh, really? <laughs> That's right. You look so excited. <laughs> Excellent. So. Um, Thank you. Uh, if, I, I don't think we have to vote on it unless you want to. Do we have to vote on it? I think. It's, okay. I think it's good. Gov ops. Good. Uh -huh. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So we have a motion to nominate. Um, so moved. I would nominate uh, Robert Her Norris to be our clerk of Senate Gov ops for the biennium of 2023-24. Excellent. And just so you all know. We do not need seconds in the committee. The committee rules are the same as on the floor. We don't need seconds on the floor, so you don't need seconds in committee. Sometimes people get confused and second things. Um, uh, so, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I vote. I vote. Yeah, I mean, I vote to vote. To vote. What kind of shit is here? And the clerk used to be the person who kept all the records, but now really that's mostly you just keep you bring the bills down uh, from the floor, house floor, or the Senate floor, goodness, and then um, record the votes. And Olivia can help you with that. And Secretary Bloomer is also a good resource if you, yeah, you call the roll questions. You call the roll when we vote on bills. So um thank you very much for serving yeah. um i i have served in this capacity in the past and i'm happy to help in any way you need help whatever you do. yes as long as you set the bar too high <laughs> yeah it's also it's kind of a rite of passage too i was i was clerk my first session too <laughs> um so um and and senator behovsky how behovsky is i've got it right um our vice chair so um we are in terms of protocol schedule we're going to be doing uh, every thursday at lunchtime we're going we're going to be having um uh, uh senator behovsky and and uh, uh olivia and i will be doing agenda planning for the following week any of you are welcome to join if you want you do not have to so don't feel obligated um but definitely let us know by thursday um if there's something you would like to see on the agenda and we'll try um, um we'll obviously 
things are um, going to <clears throat> have to change. And we, but we'll we'll set that agenda on Thursday and then be flexible with it throughout the week as we um, try to schedule witnesses and bills. Um, so as you all know, this is my first time <clears throat> a chair of the Senate Standing Committee. I did chair an off-session committee the um, Pupil Waiting Task Force. Um, I co-chaired that with uh, Representative um, Kornheiser in the House. Um, and that was a huge job. So um, I've also chaired school board and I chaired our uh, the infamous Act 46 committee in my community. And I feel like if I can do that, I can oh, probably yeah. do this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but, but I do, want all of you to feel open and to giving me feedback if you have mm -hmm. feedback for me um you know if it's uh feedback that might be a little awkward we can do it um uh, you know quietly um but please feel free to give me feedback because i'm still learning and um i don't want anybody to be you know feel like things are not running well i want to run the committee well i want us to get our work done i want us to all feel like we're members of the team and so please speak up if things are not going well um, and uh things may be bumpy sometimes but we'll get through it together um and i that all being said i you know don't want surprises so i want you to communicate with me if you're feeling like you're not comfortable with the direction we're heading or you're not you know, liking the bill that we're working on, or you want to take it in a different direction, please come and talk to me rather than surprise me during committee. Um, it will go much smoother and we'll get our work done better and we'll have better relationships if we all do that. Um, and likewise, I will do my very best to not surprise you um, with a, a witness or a bill or something um, or whatever. So, um, so let's just make sure that we keep our communications open. Um, and uh, as we move into the session, um, I know there, I guess Senator Watson, you're the only brand new person, but I know you've watched how things work here a lot. So it will get super busy as we reach crossover and we have to get all of our bills out and then we'll get super busy again at the end and things get tense. And by the end, we all kind of get sick of each other a little bit. So we'll all just try our best to continue to work well together, <laughs> even under pressure. Um, and we're, I'm still learning. I mean, I literally had a meeting this morning with Senator Kitchell and she gave me four reports to read. She's like, oh, you're the chair of GovOps. You should read all of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm still learning a lot. Um, it's a new area for me. Um, I know that two of you at least have had this, done this work before. So I will, I will definitely be you know, checking in with you guys, all of you. Um, I'm so excited that pretty much all of us have local government experience of one kind or another, school board, select board, mayor, um, law enforcement, committee work. Um, so I think that's gonna really help our, our perspective and we have lots of different um, ways that we've approached local government and state government. So I think that that's really exciting. Um, uh, we're not going to always agree, and that's okay. That's why we're here, <laughs> and uh, we will probably have different, slightly different priorities too, and that's okay as well. Um, we're not going to get to every bill this session. We're going to have a lot of bills, so we're going to have to prioritize, and that's part of what we'll be doing on Thursday afternoons is really trying to prioritize which bills we take up when. Some bills we have to do, um, or sort of have to do. We don't have any must-do bills, but some bills are more... Uh, urgent than others. We will be getting a bill next week from the House um, that it, that yet again extends the meeting, the town meeting day um, COVID protocols to allow for remote town meetings. Um, I, I sent you that email. I included you in my response to the chat from Sharon. Oh, I don't think I saw it yet, but I will. Okay. Um, anyway, yes, we're beginning to get. Yeah, you know, we'll towns are starting town. to get in touch with us and they all expire on the 15th those protocols so we're uh, the, the the agreement is that we'll do it one more time and that we need to figure out a permanent solution um so we're we're uh we are going to do that bill and so that's one of the ones that we'll have to move out of here quickly but it's not uh it's pretty narrow um, yes. So hopefully it won't be complicated. And I 
that all of us except for Senator Watson have already done it once or twice or three times. <laughs> so um, uh, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say there are two, have two things if we want to do them this session. When you say we don't have things we have to do. Yeah. If we have any election law bills, they have mm -hmm. to be done this session. And if we have any uh, constitutional amendments, they have to be introduced and acted on this session. Right. That's a that's a really good point because next Sorry, year. Just, no, no. I just wanted you. to remind ourselves of those things. Yeah. So any election bills will will take up. You know, we'll figure that out, take them up this session because next year's an election year. We can't do election year bills that year. And again, the constitutional amendment for those of you who are new or new to the Senate. Um, every four years is a cycle where we're able to amend or start the process of trying to amend the Constitution as we did four years ago with our the two constitutional amendments that just passed um, in November. Um, they have to start in the Senate. The Constitution requires it. They can only be introduced by senators. We have to vote on them. Then they go over the House and they're unamendable. So whatever comes out of the Senate stays, um, the language stays, the House then votes on it, then it sits for a while, we reelect new legislature and it has to go through the same process again, the same language, it can't be amended. So it's a law, and then it's voted on by the voters at an election day. So it's a very long process, um, but we, uh, so this is the year, you're right, that we would have to do that. And um, this committee may be working on some. Uh, so let me see. Protocols for Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is the the view I think that we're going to use. Or did you did we want well, to talk about good. that? Yeah. Um, so that is what they are seeing on the live stream. Um, and if there oh, is, is yes, if there is witness, um, anybody else who joins through Zoom, it will be speaker view. Um, it's just the easiest way to kind of. Um, see everybody talking uh, most equal way. Um, and so whoever's talking will come up and that's what will go on the live stream. Yeah. And I can see you, Olivia, better this way than I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I just encourage everyone uh, to make sure to look and see if, if the little red box is there saying live because it's, it's helped check me and I need being checked a lot. So it's it help check me on, on occasion. Yeah, Saying so something the live, I regret. Right, the live button is up there. We do have a little on air thing. If people want to use that, mm -hmm. we can use it. And, and Olivia can put it on. Yeah. If people, do people want to use the little mm -hmm. on air sign or not? I think that's pretty fun, straightforward. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, if it becomes a problem, we can put that up. Um, we are gonna obviously live stream all of our meetings. We will take breaks, and if we start to get into conversations that's more personal and we want to, you know, end the meeting, our official business, we can end the, our official business. But any a thing official, any votes we take, any discussions, any testimony, all all committee discussions are live streamed. Um, it is, I it's chair's discretion about um, remote witnesses and remote participation in committee. I'm comfortable with it after doing it for three sessions. Um, so if you need to be remote because of um, illness or family obligation, um, you can zoom in remote. Please let me know that I that you're going to be remote, and let Olivia know that you're going to be remote, so that we know where you are. <laughs> um, we are going to also let um, witnesses, um, and in fact, many witnesses, we're going to ask them. We prefer them to be remote so we don't have the committee room kind of overflowing with people. Um, we are going to have uh, the witness chair and then three other chairs, one that's reserved for attorneys. Um, if press want to be in here, they get priority over for a chair as well. Um, and then one member of the public so that maximum we would have in here is 10, I think. So we're we're gonna try to keep it limited so we're not having an overflow. The air circulation in the state house is not good. And our Senate rooms are actually pretty small. Um, so um, we're gonna try to limit, but obviously remain accessible. Um, but uh, especially um, Senator Norris and Senator White, since you're down there, if things get to be too chaotic and we need to take a break because they're too, then I, I rely on you to be like, 
all right, you know, Ruth, let's take a break or whatever, but never get yourself into an awkward position. <laughs> we can always, and I will be as strict as possible <laughs> to try to make sure that we don't have too many people um, in the room. Um, and uh, let me see, let's do a list. Um, Zoom. Uh, there is on the wall up there next to the map, you can see there's a little button. That is a health emergency button. Mm -hmm. Senator Norris, that's really important, especially for you to know if something happens in the room because you're the closest to it. If you press that button, that will get the um, capital security and they will bring a medical bag with them. Um, so um, that, that will alert them um, and anyone who needs to press it, but you're the closest. So I would imagine if something happens and it, things have happened mm -hmm. in my four yeah. years here, um, falls, um, heart attacks, mm -hmm. um, things. So it's not yeah. unheard of that. So if something happens to me, press the button. A center white yeah, woman. Thank she you. Was on on death. Death. <laughs> she, <laughs> quick. Okay. In fact, it's pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> There's also an emergency button down here to my underneath my desk um so if something happens god forbid then we we and you should know this is here and, and Olivia does this we'll, we'll have that safety training from the chief i'm sure and the sergeant at arms yes exactly um so just so you know for safety protocols um uh we okay uh, maybe we should all get olivia our our cell phones uh, and we should all if you're going to be late or there's any problem text Olivia and yes. let her know. Give a cell number. Cell we'll number. get you yes. our cell phone numbers and we should get yours in return. Is that okay with yes. you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so if everyone wants to um, text Olivia, Olivia her, your, and we, I think, should all have each other's um, cell numbers if you haven't shared them. I can create a little <clears throat> box yeah. chat if um, that's helpful. Um, although it should only be used for logistics like timing like i'm going to be late or whatever not anything that is substantive um i do not want my phone to have to be um foia um because so only only logistics on the phone nothing else if you're going to email about if you're going to uh, maybe emojis maybe emojis <laughs> emojis <laughs> logistics. um if you need to get in touch about a bill or a witness or something email okay um and uh, um, and you guys can text me whenever you need to, but please only during work hours unless it's an emergency for Olivia. Um, um, Madam Chair, uh, would this be a good moment to break open my tradition, my now seventh year tradition of the Godiva chocolate? <gasps> oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You brought chocolate? <laughs> so every year I get sent this box of Godiva chocolates from my dear sister-in-law, who is a professor at Stanford, and she should know better, but she so I and she knows that I now share them with government operations. So this has become a, a tradition <laughs> for seven years. And so chocolate tradition. A chocolate tradition. So the first week of session, I am thrilled to thank Hester Goodenough Gelber for this fabulous box of Godiva chocolates and there's little maps so we can all choose what works for you but it it, take, it doesn't take us long to go through them but um, here I'll give you the map so you can okay. start with that one yeah, <laughs> exactly and it, so anyway and Tucker, of course, has his favorites too when he comes in but Tim oh Tim's new so he's gonna have to figure it out <laughs> Anyway, well, wow. can I show up these chocolates? Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I need to on. send that to Esther. Wait, wait, wait! I need a picture too first. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Okay. No one's okay. allergic to anything. Oh, oh, oh great! Right. That. Oh, on the back of your so on, good. Thank you for, for um, Senator Dehelski. Yes, <laughs> I do have some allergies. Um, some of them are known, some of them are not. My one and only request for committee room, I am allergic to oranges. Oh, I'm um, sorry. So I have okay, some. don't rub it on me. But if <laughs> but if, if we could refrain from eating oranges in the committee room, that would be really helpful for me. Um, I have some sort of less 
clear allergic things. So you might be pushing that emergency button for me, but I hope not. Um, there is always an EpiPen in my desk on the Senate floor and liquid Benadryl in my desk on the Senate floor. I may put some in, in my drawer here as well. Yeah, I will just do that. Yeah. That would be great. Um, so yeah, that's my my one request on on things in the green room. They do have a orange allergy. Anyone else with health or safety concerns or questions or reports? I want to make sure first and foremost that we're healthy and safety safe in here. Oh geez, yeah. <clears throat> um, well, actually, this should be personal information, but I do carry a uh, micro. Okay, what? Nitro. Nitro. Oh, in case. In case do, do, I need it. Yes. Yeah. But no. do you self administer that, Bob, or do we help you? Well, preferably, I won't have to use it. Right, of course. That's do, our first choice. I will self administer it, but I spend 2016 on every unit. So. Okay. What is right. it? Can you tell me what that is? I don't know. Or we can talk about it. Oh, okay, that would be great. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. let's talk about yeah. it. But but thank you. Um, there are other things that people want to share off camera about health and safety. Let's do that. Um, uh, okay, I want to, um, are there anything else about protocols, room? We're a little more cramped because there are six of us, but hopefully you guys are okay on this side. You should each have a drawer. There should be, I think Allison might have taken the middle drawer. Did you take the middle drawer over here? I'm still up here. The oh, oh. looks to be mostly things that Senator White and I can share, like oh, okay, and okay. Clips so maybe we'll just make that out for Anne. Yeah, yeah, Very that's nice. for Anne. That this will we'll make that like our uh, uh, supply drawer. That's a better word. I was gonna say, is this the Senate GovOps junk drawer? Yeah, junk <laughs> drawer. We are going to be moving this big um, Senate. Uh, this big cabinet out of here and we'll just have that one with four drawers and then the smaller one with two drawers so we'll each have a drawer if you want to put files in it or shoes in it which is what i do or snacks or you know personal items you can put them in the drawers um and uh if you need more space we can we can talk about that but we're trying to make the room a little bigger and more comfortable because it's getting a little crowded especially with six of them, seven of us in here all the time um, well, so, go ahead. No, we need a drawer dedicated to the to the original bill. So actually, it may not be that we can get rid of all these because uh, you need to have uh, at least one for all the original bills. Okay. okay. So Olivia and I will talk about yeah, that because yeah. that's, so that's a good point. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I do want before our attorneys come in here, I want to make sure we have time to talk about priorities um, and give each other a heads up about bills you know are coming that you've introduced or um, bills you you have questions about or just general priorities that you want to do with the committee. So um, why don't we start with Madam Vice Chair? Um, so. First and foremost, my priority is to be learning from all of you and to, you know, I'm, I'm new in the role of vice chair. I did serve on house government operations, but I know that I have a lot to learn. Um, and in terms of legislative priorities, um, I am pretty committed to campaign finance reform mm -hmm. um, and voting access, as well as um, I, <clears throat> one of the bills that I introduced on the house side and will be reintroducing here on the Senate side is a bill around municipal police oversight. And then thinking about our state workers and ensuring that they are not misclassified for the jobs that they are doing and that we keep state work within the state government and, and limit privatization when possible. Um, and then of course, um, as a social worker, um, I'm acutely aware of the mental health crisis. Um, I don't believe that this will be this year, but a bill that I passed in the last biennium has a report coming back to us around ways to grow and diversify our mental health workforce. So that our uh, mental health workforce, um, it's within it's within an OPR bill that, that we moved through House and Senate government operations last year. And so in the next session, I will be looking to, to take action on, on what that report tells us so that we can hopefully grow and diversify our mental health workforce because it is so needed um, 
I, it's, I have a probably three year long wait list right now for people trying to access services. And most of them, when they talk to me, have talked to 15, 16, 17 other people already who have wait lists or don't because many people closed their wait lists because it's so long. So I know that there's an incredible need to support and grow and, and decrease bureaucratic red tape for that workforce. I know also um, there's a lot of challenges that I have heard from people coming from out of state and trying to transfer their license into Vermont. So looking at ways that we don't lower the requirements to make sure that we're keeping the public safe, but that we limit the red tape and make that system more streamlined for people to enter are some of the things that are on my radar for this biennium. Um, my priorities, I have two smaller uh, priorities, I'll just say, that are more Windsor County specific, which is I've been asked to draft a bill around community safety assessments and giving municipalities the ability to do what Brattleboro did, um, which is a community safety assessment um, in their towns. So I'd love for us to look at that and the safety conversation we're having here. Uh, and then I don't know if tax incremental financing districts come through this committee in any way. Okay. Not really. Never mind. Right. Okay. Um, so then besides that, uh, legislative pay and benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, I said I'd come up with any <clears throat> big priorities as far as introducing bills or whatever else. Requires to make sure that the bills that are coming through here, anything that I can add to make this a good bill, not a better bill, of course, the station was through a month, my first concern. Uh, it goes without saying, clearly, that I'm concerned about uh, state employees, retired state employees, and so on and so forth, being one for myself, and there are many members of the individuals who are in the state. Of and I'm here to uh, basically offer what I can and maybe some checks and balances for the law enforcement community in reference to how uh, we treat them. And I'm sure everyone has that same expectation, but I'm just here to uh, answer or offer any advice that may, may have that particular area. Thank you. You know, just a note that this committee, one of our big lifts in the last binding was the pension, uh, the pension reform bill really and um, so pensions are a big piece of what we do here it'll be very interesting to hear get a be getting an update from the treasurer's office uh, and from the unions but <clears throat> yeah all, and to that point working yeah thursday we're going to be meeting jointly with appropriations yes and yes. hopefully we work that out um to get an update on the pensions um bill or situation and then friday then new treasurer will come in and talk with us so yeah yeah because it's a big piece of what we did yeah senator watson yeah thanks i am uh, excited to talk about ranked choice voting uh, that's i know it's a not a new topic but it's something i'm excited to work on um that's probably the biggest one for me but i i also want to add uh, you know coming from uh, the municipal world i am interested in the permissions that we give all municipalities and uh, just looking at uh particularly like i'm bringing a uh yeah, like a climate lens to that you know how are municipalities able to uh regulate or and make ordinances about uh fossil fuels or uh energy efficiency in um new construction that kind of thing <clears throat> so that's that's something that's on my radar. Um, I I I'm one I'm going to put this as a wondering. I realize it's not necessarily a priority, but I I wonder if um, childcare is going to uh, dip into this committee at all. It um, may. It, it may actually. It, yeah. Okay. It um, may partly because of licensing and um, partly. It's mostly from the systems oversight. Um, yeah. the, the child care bill does include actually a good chunk of it yeah. um, is about um, the oversight and the, um, the, the role of the Agency of Education and the Agency of Human Services, yeah, which other. is really a government operations um, sure. issue. So it is, I'm hopeful that we will get that bill as, in part for at least a 
drive through this committee. Yeah. It, it is going to be starting in the house. Mm -hmm. So it would be the second half of the session yeah. that we would look at that. Well, so I'm, uh, I'll just say, I'm not sure that I have a, a you know, a bent on that. I'm just, I'm very interested in that um, issue and that topic. Um, and then I just want to echo a uh, couple of that. Ski. Um, yes, easy. <laughs> yes, another time, please. Um, which is just campaign finance reform, and and also uh, the red tape that workers experience to being employed, and I'm particularly tuned into um, uh, how one's criminal record actually might affect uh, employment. Um, and, making it you know potentially easier for us to, to get employed. Yes, because we have done that and we have made it easier. We got rid of that check the box. I can't remember it was like yes. many years ago. Helen Headsville. I have a question about that actually. Um so we got rid of ban of ban box. Box. Ban box. Ban box. Ban box. I remember we did that, but our mm -hmm. criminal rec our criminal background check still allowable in all cases of employment once they clear past that first hurdle, or is it only allowable if it's relevant to the job? A good question. Yeah. We should get an answer. <laughs> we have attorneys coming soon. Excellent. <laughs> okay, that's that's my list. Okay. My list. Excellent. Long. That's a great list. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably not do all of that. That's great. <laughs> so, I, a lot of that we'll touch on in some way or another. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so Bob, I, I want you to know that we actually for the last six years, law enforcement has been a big piece, a big priority for this committee and the former chair. Um, we did a lot to work of work on reforming and updating the, the Criminal Justice Council and improving number who's represented. You know, you know we, we really worked on equity and inclusion in large measure. And many of these things also the getting rid of the rotating door as much as possible with law enforcement. We're, We've been really working on uh, law enforcement, everything from looking at regional public safety and, and getting smarter about some of the things, not so much with law enforcement, but the other aspects of public safety that are volunteer dependent. Uh, uh, EMS is a real challenge. Anyway, so I just want you to know there's a big, there's actually a significant uh, history in this committee of working on those on those issues. Uh, my uh, priorities this year, and I, all the bills that come are, are priorities in their own funny way, but reviewing the sustainability of legislature of legislators compensation and our life. Uh, it has changed our, you know, just to go to what Becca said and what Ruth, Ruth and I have been working on this, but we have our, our the expectations of, of what legislators uh, expectations of legislators has radically evolved mm -hmm. since 2005. And I would say a huge percent of that is because of what's evolved in our IT world and email. Um, but our compensation needs to be reviewed. Our benefits need to be reviewed. We need to make this a sustainable job going into the future. Our, just to give you a notion, our average weekly wage in Vermont right now is $1,060 a week. We are paid eight hundred and eleven dollars a week. We were to have been paid. The original rethinking of this many years ago was that we would be paying the average Vermont wage, which we aren't. So we also have no benefits after it. Whenever I leave the legislature, I will have left with over twenty years experience and twenty years given to this job with no retirement benefit at all. Mm -hmm. So and enough on that. I'm, I'm really. Keen on doing. I'm also keen on on on, on making uh, uh, embedding into our statutes the lessons we've learned from COVID. And the first one of that, I would say, is the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people you guys have been hearing from, but I've heard from a number of of our town commissions that they would really appreciate if we make the open <clears throat> go back to looking at the open meeting law and uh, making it possible to not have to have somebody embedded at town hall who's run you know or you know that there doesn't have to be a physical presence anywhere that we can have open meeting uh that the open meeting law can be completely remote also i carry the hat in large measure for workforce development in senate economic development and i have done that in this committee as well uh and i'm very interested in in almost everything to do with workforce development uh, uniform licensure and, and many of the other things, reducing the barriers that some of our 
work in OPR and presents uh, and licensure mm -hmm. to go presents to get more people to come into the state. That's Tanya, it's Tanya. Mm -hmm. And um, the Ethics Commission, which we created and then put some teeth into last year, uh, I'm very keen to see how that segues into our campaign finance work and all the other work we're doing. Um, but I'm very keen to hear about our update, um, how the ethics uh, standards that we put into play last year, how they're rolling out and what's happening. Excellent. And I think we've invited them in, right? Are they on our list? Um, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Oh, right. So um, <clears throat> before I go into my priorities, um, for the next two weeks, probably, we are going to just be hearing from people, from people who are in our area. Today, we're um, starting with the um, State Director mm -hmm. of Racial Equity and the um, Vermont State Employees Association. Those are, just happen to be the first two that we're hearing from today. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from a lot of um, public safety um, and uh, broadly speaking, um, the, Sh the Sheriff's Association, the um, Ambulance Association, the Public uh, Safety Director, etc., Com Commissioner of Public Safety. So a lot of people. Um, for those of you, you should know this, but our our agendas are posted on our website. And if you have, need any help navigating the website, if um, especially I'm looking at um, you, Anne, but um, uh, Olivia can help you uh, navigate the website and show you where documents are. It's an incredibly helpful resource and anybody who might be listening out there, I definitely recommend um, checking out the website as we go through bills, everything will be posted there. Um, so and, and just on uh, the uh, director of racial equity, we created that job. I mean, that came out of this committee, so it's yeah, well, that's the kind of work. It's a big Great range of work. Um, so a lot of we've already mentioned the priorities that that I have. Um, so that's great uh, that we're fairly aligned. Um, definitely, um, we, we will be seeing a bill on legislative compensation and pay um, that will be in our committee. We did get our very first bill um, today. It's on the wall. Um, so that is a bill about the auditor and the what um, access the auditor has to oh, yeah. uh, outside contracts. Um, we will um, uh, uh, have a bill about um, ring choice voting um, as will be coming um, as well. And um, we will be working on sheriffs. And so Senator Norris, I'm really excited to have you on the committee because I know that you'll have a lot of really good hands on experience. Um, but as you know, there have been a lot of incidents around the state of various kinds involving sheriffs. So we're, we're going to take a look at the statutes that govern sheriffs and um, uh, what we might be able to do to improve oversight. Um, and we may be um, looking at a constitutional amendment. So um, regarding sheriffs, because they are constitutional officers. So we are limited in what we're able to do. So stay tuned on that. Yeah, come on in, Tucker. Um, is Tim with you? Yeah, come on in. Um, we're just finishing up and then we'll get to you guys. But have this. Yeah, are there enough chairs there? So there should be three chairs. There's one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. It's yours. And I forgot that you were um, bringing your locker. So I'm and Tucker, it's the time of time. So if you pass the chocolates, <laughs> and all three of you. Yeah. Um, and um, we uh, we will have a couple bills about um, uh, the Office of Professional Regulation. Um, so OPR related bills, um, uh, including one about art therapists. There's one in the house that will probably come our way about speech therapists. Um, so we'll see um, where those go. Um, and then we also will leave open the possibility of committee bills, which are bills that we as a committee decide we want to do because we've heard from people about their priorities or we've discovered an issue that we need to address in legislation. Um, so committee bills are always an option um, if we need to employ it. Um, so, and that's why we have excellent attorneys here to help us with those. Um, 
So uh, we're going to certainly be really busy, um, but the next couple of weeks, I really want you all to take the time. I know I'm going to be taking the time to really just understand what's in our jurisdiction, hear from the people who are the most common stakeholders um, and what their priorities are and what they're experiencing out in the field in whatever angle that they have um, and, um, and really help that to inform our work here um, because that's sort of part of the point. You guys okay? Yes, I'm just trying to charge your iPad, but we're using my computer. Just making it work. Okay. Very impressed. So um, we're going to move on to our <clears throat> legislative council attorneys who have joined us, and they're going to introduce themselves and talk about the area that they work in and how it relates to our work in the committee. Um, we did a little icebreaker, which. Um, you're welcome to do, or if it's too embarrassing, you can ignore it. But um, okay, you're giving them a coach. <laughs> well, their staff. I guess I didn't give Olivia the option, so I'd really like you to do it. We <laughs> talked about um, what um, a useful emoji. Um, so think about a, a, an emoji that you might use frequently, or that you find particularly cute or compelling, or something. Um, but if you could. Um, uh, Tucker, since you're standing, would you like to start in the witness chair and just tell us a little bit about yourself to, you know, we're live on YouTube, so whatever you're comfortable with sharing or not is fine, you know, and um, a useful emoji, and then talk about your area of the law and what, what you what you work on. So thank you. Um, do you, we can go around and tell you all of our names if you'd like. Um, sure. Why don't we start with that? So Senator Norris, why don't you start? Bob Norris, Franklin County. Ann Watson, Washington County. Pals. Windsor. <laughs> Ruth Hardy, Addison County. Tanya Vihovsky, Chitton Central. Uh, Rebecca White, Windsor County. And over here, yes. Olivia Parker, Committee Assistant. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, everyone. For the record, Tucker Anderson, Legislative Council, and I know all of you, thankfully, so this is going to be an easy transition to the new biennium. I think I've either worked with all of you or, in the case of Senator Norris, <laughs> eaten a sandwich in your vicinity. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, I've been with the General Assembly for six years now. Uh, I started as a law clerk for Damian Leonard and Betsy Ann Lass. Um, and I have been with Legislative Council as a Legislative Council uh, for the last four years. So we're entering my fifth session as a grown-up Ledge Council here with the General Assembly. Um, before that, general info, because we're live, not getting into my phone number, social security number, date of birth and address, slash list of peers. Um, <laughs> uh, I went to Penn State Law, um, I lived in Europe for a long time. I'm an AmeriCorps alum. I speak Danish, French, and English uh, proficiently. Um, those are pretty much all the interesting resume stats that I have. I run a lot uh, and recently started getting into triathlon. Um, so Ooh, I haven't heard that. That's really all that's interesting. Wow. But it's a good segue into useful emoji, fire. Yeah. Yes. yes, fire. Fire is a great one. Fire is a good way for me to hold on to my youth and call things fire. Um, <laughs> it's it's fire. Yeah, it's fire. No fire Senator Clarkson, no cap. That's fire. Uh, so that's, that's, this is this is all. I learned so many things from Touch. Thirty years in the I don't know. Uh, but uh, fire, you know, can be used as a compliment, but uh, also you can send it out, you know, if something is happening quickly. Um, and because I run a lot, I talk to a lot of runners. So when they, you know, talk about their times in a race, it's like fire that was fast yes fast race cars are yeah. fast too yeah sure so stuff if you know a racer you can send a fire the next time they finish their race good job mm -hmm. things you learn in this committee yeah <laughs> um, okay. my subject areas um, municipal government municipal charters um, public records act the open meeting law i have half of the GovOps team and the other half mm -hmm. shortly uh, I also deal with liquor and lottery and uh, libraries. 
oh. three fun L's. Um, <laughs> we love your subject. Occasionally, I also dabble in tobacco, but only with respect to licensing fees and enforcement. Uh, otherwise, tobacco is a health issue, I believe, under the General Assembly's division of jurisdictions. So that's where I work. And uh, I have a law clerk for this session, mm -hmm. Ashley Engel. Actually, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Oh, oh we'll, we'll, we'll have her come into the chair. So, but first, you stay. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Tucker or, or questions about what he does or his area mm -hmm. or um, nothing personal off the record um, personal <clears throat> stuff? But. I want to know how many of the 251 towns have you actually got? Yeah, 252. When did the yeah, second <laughs> last session? Oh, right. Oh, right. right. We did that. We did that. 252. Because for Tucker's wedding, we gave them a gift of membership into the 251 club because he was doing municipal law, right? Okay. I, that's what I want to know. How many of the 252 <laughs> towns have you actually been you know, to? I haven't done a count. Okay. But Someday we'd love an update. Sure. I have also been to a gore because I live next to a gore. So we've perused yes. yeah. Mule's gore. gore. Yeah. yeah. It's my gore. Uh, it's a beautiful gore. It's his gore, too. It's, it's a total gore. It's a great gore. With my transition into triathlon, I've been riding my bike a lot more. And when you have to ride like 100 miles on a training day, you end up seeing a lot of Vermont's municipalities. But I kind of just do circuits of Addison County. So I've seen a lot of Addison County since yeah. that one. And Glebes. And Tucker is a fabulous expert on gores and Glebes. Yes. I don't know if there are any Glebes left, but if they come up, I can tell you all about the colonial Clevelands. Wow, that's exciting. That, that does remind me that another thing that comes through this committee are all the charter changes, yes. the municipal charter changes. They start, all start in the house, so we would get them after they, they've taken a look at them. So I know that there will be, there always are. Um, and we sometimes have to drop everything and do the charter and then get back to whatever else we were working on. All right, anything else you want to tell us? That's all. How would you um, prefer we get a hold of you through Olivia, or how? Like we want to respect you and your time and your preferred method of communication. For purposes of scheduling, scheduling. and if I'm needed in the committee, Olivia yeah. has access to my calendar, and she's going to be the fastest method and the best method to get a hold of me. If you have individual questions, or you need to get a hold of me to not. For something other than scheduling purposes, email. Uh, and I check pretty much every second of every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tucker. We're gonna actually go to Tim next and then we'll come then we'll give you a chance. Okay, is that all right? Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tim Devlin. <laughs> I'm one of the other uh, city oh, sorry, attorneys in the uh, Legislative Council Office here. Um, I am new on the job. I just joined in uh, September. And it's actually uh, came right off of three years working for the city of Burlington. So also my major stop clicking me in the no longer a city attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy with my new role here. A um, little bit about myself. I'm originally from Pulteney, Vermont, Rutland County. And um, let's see, uh, I've been up and down professionally the East Coast uh, in Montreal, Boston, DC um, over the years, and uh, to Yale University and uh, practice there, studied law at Boston College. Um, let's see, important emojis to my day would probably have to include the coffee and next to the donut emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I'm motivated <laughs> if I'm ever looking for a um, some companionship in uh, my quest for coffee. I, don't know. <clears throat> I send this with my colleagues here. Uh, professionally, um, in my capacity here in the office, I handle primarily three different uh, subject matters. One's elections, and one's public safety, and the third is uh, professional regulation. I'm looking at elections that uh, ranges from qualification and registration of voters, um, political parties and their organization to some extent, 
conduct of elections at the local, county, and state levels, as well as presidential elections too, both primaries and general elections. Uh, campaign finance is uh, another heady one, as well as reapportionment, but that's not coming up for another nine years, so we can probably have to worry too, too much about that. Public and safety um, includes only law enforcement, some of it that's not really in the uh, Judiciary Committee's uh, purview, that is. Uh, fire protection and fire prevention, and emergencies, including uh, and on EMS, things of that nature. And professional regulation really is um, bills that deal with criteria and standards for professional regulation, typically overseen by the Office of Professional Regulation. Uh, I think for me now, there's approximately 50 uh, profession trained plumbers and physical therapists that fall into that range. Um, other miscellaneous topics include lobbying, governmental ethics, uh, results based accountability, things of that nature. But we'll just kind of keep it short and sweet. and. Toss it back to you. If you have any questions, more than happy to uh, ask them. Does anyone have any questions for today? That's oh, great that you've come back to Vermont to work. That's great. Huh? How many years were you in Burlington as, as, as the city attorneys? Uh, three years. And they have how many city attorneys? Uh, right now, they don't have a city attorney. Like there's an acting city attorney, assistant city attorneys, uh, maybe four right now. Wow. I'll just double check that. That's right. It's a big city, you know. It is the big city. Big city. That's right. But it's actually, yeah. That's right. It's, right. it's not Buffalo's the Queen City. Mm -hmm. every city has in a New York, city. every city. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, so I assume the same for getting a hold of you yes. through Olivia for scheduling. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay. I know. Are you, do you, generally work in any other, well, you don't know because you haven't been here for the first session, but most, it sounds like your areas are mostly of ops. You yes. won't be going around to a lot of cases. Some like judiciary. Yeah. Maybe some judiciary. Yeah. Public safety is the most. Possibly, but yeah. Yeah, okay. I expect to be mostly in of ops. Great. Right. Tim has already done some great work getting some bills ready for us that we'll all see soon. Um, so thank you so much. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Yeah, it's great to have you. All right, come on. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ashley Angel. I am a BLS alum. I'm a recent graduate. Um, I just started working for Tucker and Michael O'Grady down in Ledge Council a month ago. So I'm going to be focusing in on a lot of Tucker's um, areas of law, and then I'm also working on environmental and agricultural law as well um, while I am here. Uh, and emoji that describes me, I would like to say probably the emoji that makes this face. Mostly because I think it's just funny. Um, <laughs> And um, you mean the one that's all teeth and smile. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like a, a, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, fun facts about me um, I graduated from the University of Oregon with a degree in environmental studies, mm -hmm. um, then came over here. Uh, opposite coastlines, um, lived in a myriad of places <clears throat> across the country, and I'm really excited to work with you guys this term. So did you just graduate from the law school and now you're, or are you in your third year? Um, I graduated from BLS in 2020. Um, oh, okay. Okay. I've been clerking and I worked at the Washington County State's Attorney's Office before. I yeah, you worked with Rory. Yeah. Really, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, well, welcome. We're excited to have you. And I'm sure we'll have you in the witness chair on some bills um, at Tucker's discretion. <laughs> <laughs> and you join a great group of VLS graduates in Legislative Council. I'm excited. To with the exception that. of these two attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> but almost, I mean, a huge percent of Ledge Council is. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Okay. It's a significant percent. We'll get you the data, Allison. Have an update. Anyway, it's so nice that you're here. It's great. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Because she's a clerk, not an intern. Yeah, okay, I got that. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Of course. We're, we're happy to have you. Um, thank you both uh, as well for coming by. And we'll just let you know when we need you, which will probably be pretty soon. <laughs> um, and uh, 
uh, yeah, so uh, just let me know if you have questions or concerns too, or if, uh, if the committee is driving you crazy, please let me know. Yeah. And we'll try to fix that, or at least give you chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you around. Um, thank you, guys. But uh, something uh, to note, uh, if you haven't met the House members who are on our sister committee over there, um, it, the chair is Mike McCarthy and the vice chair is Matt Byron. Very excited about that. They're both really good guys. I know them well. And um, so I think we're gonna have really good open communications and partnership with, with that, our sister committee. Um, but if you um, don't know them, I definitely try to introduce yourself in the hallway um, and take a look at the list of house members who are on that committee because we need to be working closely with them on bills and timing and making sure that, you know, their priorities and our priorities um, get done as much as possible. Not always agree with them for sure, um, but um, want to make sure that we work well with them. So definitely say hi to them. Um, I actually don't even know where their room is. I haven't been up to their room, but I've stopped. They're back. Room. It's not from 11 anymore. Not no, it's not from us now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a well, I don't think it wasn't back in the original house of rooms, especially because they gained the committee member. Like they just typically won't it's it. small. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we our witness is coming at three, right? So if we want to take a ten minute break, just please be back on time um, because we don't want to keep our witnesses waiting. And I believe is she going to be here in person? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, Susanna is coming in person. So it'd be great to we're all here for when she shows up. And um, yeah, just let me know if there are other people who you don't see on the list, who you want on the list to hear an update, or if especially Senator Clarkson, if there was some report or something that we should be getting um, a, a report back on or something. You have the list of the reports that we're doing. I think we should go through us. it together. Um, I'd love to because I, I, I am forgetting all the things that were written by Jane gave you for. I have four reports. The Yaki doll. Like, I'll get to read them tonight. Yeah, right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so just let me know if there are others that don't show up in the agenda. So, uh, Olivia and I are still working it out, trying to squeeze people in, um, trying to. We were generous with time, and now we're getting less generous with time as we're 